Hey folks, I've got another couple of articles here that I wanted to bring to you that uh, kind of shine some light on just how bad things are going to get. Um, obviously, if, you, if you're watching this channel or, and others like it, you already know things are going to get bad. Um, and you know that it's going to be happening fairly quickly. Um, there are a couple of articles here that I wanted to share with you that kind of shed some light on just what you can expect this year, just this year alone. Um, now the first uh, basically says that Americans should budget an extra $5,200 this year. Um, average U.S. households will spend $5,200 more compared to last year for the exact same products and services. Okay, so that roughly equates to an additional $433 per month for the same goods and services. Um, and according to this particular article, it says $2,200 of that will come from food and energy. Now, I kind of disagree with that a little bit. I tend to believe that that number might actually be low this, the 5200 number might actually be low and the $2,200 coming from food and energy is definitely low um, I know my typical grocery bill used to be o over uh, the last year or, or two not counting this year but over the last year or two my grocery bill would typically run 175 to $200 max every two weeks. You know, but typically about 150 though is what it was at. It could go up to 200. It all depends on what I was buying. Um, but it was averaging around 150 to $175 every two weeks. Because that, that's how often I would go to the store. Um, here lately, I would say that's nearly doubled. Um, in fact, one trip that I was looking at, and I watch what I buy, I watch what I spend. One trip that I that would have cost me say a hundred dollars, hundred a hundred to one hundred and twenty-five dollars a year ago for those exact same items cost me two hundred dollars. Not. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago so I would say my grocery bill is actually doubled um, and that's just groceries that's not including gas that's not including electricity um, got quite a breeze going here uh, we got some storms coming in tonight so they should be here about 11 o'clock tonight according to the last forecast I, I saw but anyway so this $5,200 more, I think, is low. The $2,200 for our food and energy is definitely much lower than what I would say. Because in my area, a year ago, we were paying $289, $299 for, uh, for gas. And now we're, uh, we're paying anywhere from $389 to $429. So uh, that's nearly... Uh, nearly two dollars more per gallon for gas alone uh, my electric bill my light bill has doubled for the most part and December January and February are always the most expensive months for me because unfortunately the house I live in is all electric so I don't have gas for for heat which would offset some of that a little bit. I have an electric furnace and typically my light bill for those three months is about $250 a month provided it doesn't get really cold for long periods of time. That's counting a week or two of really cold weather followed by a week or two of mild weather. But this year I've been paying in the neighborhood of 350 to 375 per month for my lights just for the uh, uh, December to February 
uh, months. So that bill has gone up considerably now. <laughs> I'm thankfully it's warmed up considerably. We've had a few cool nights, but it's it's been a much warmer for the past few weeks. So this this most recent bill actually was only 175, where it normally would be about a hundred dollars. So yeah, the uh, the my electricity has nearly doubled, gas has nearly doubled, my food bill has nearly doubled. So this these numbers. I'm not sure where they're getting their information for these numbers, but to me, that's just not jiving. Um, now, I believe that was from Insider.com. No, excuse me, that was Bloomberg. I'm sorry, that was Bloomberg. Anyway, um, the next one is from CBS. And again, like I said, I don't focus on getting all my news from uh, conservative or right-wing news sources or all left-wing news sources I, I tend to get from a broad spectrum of websites uh, because both spectrums both sides of the spectrum as far as the political party is concerned they both have their agenda they're both going to play with the data and manipulate the data and play with headlines to to push their agenda and, and their stories and their narratives. So to kind of get a good understanding of what's actually going on, you have to be open-minded enough to read from sources that are oftentimes contrary to what you personally believe. Um, so I try to draw a lot of my articles from both right and left sides and and from that I can kind of filter out a lot of the biases that these uh, that are these news sources often uh, flavor their stories with and that allows me to sift out what I believe is the small kernels of truth in each each article that can give me a good idea of what's happening so the next one is, like I said, was from CBS.com, uh, and it's an interview with the uh, BlackRock president, uh, Rob Capito. The article, and some people might find this offensive, uh, they might have a knee-jerk emotional reaction to the headline, I'm just reading, I'm going to read... Uh, just a couple of bits out of the article and then I'm going to give you my take on it. Inflation will clobber entitled generation of consumers, BlackRock president says. Okay. The first paragraph from the article that I want to quote, I want to quote and I'm quoting directly. I wrote this down. It's been 40 years since inflation was as high as it is today. And that means an entire generation of entitled consumers is about to learn some very rude lessons about life and money, according to BlackRock President Rob Capito. For the first time ever, this generation is going to go into a store and not be able to get what they want. Alright, now just a little bit further down into the article, I'm not going to read the whole article, but just a, a couple of pieces out of it. Links will be in the description. A little bit further down in the article, says, according to Capito's comments, the economy is dealing with scarcity inflation, which are shortages of commodities, housing, and workers. Here's a quote. I would put on your seatbelts because this is something we haven't seen, Capito said. Now, a lot of people are, just in reading the article, a lot of people had a very harsh reaction to the entitled generation bit and what I would say is that it wasn't intended necessarily as a belittlement of the current generation but it is a fact that compared to previous generations there is a sense of entitlement with the current generation and by that I mean that When my grandparents and my parents were young, oftentimes they had to do without. 
And even when I was a kid, I remember times when my family couldn't afford to get all the things that we wanted. I mean, in fact, quite frequently as a child, I and I'm using this as an example, I know it's not... I would remember playing with toys that I would be lucky if I could get get one really cheap toy every every time my uh, my father got paid or every other paycheck or something like that. And I'm talking about a really cheap toy, maybe a couple of dollars a piece. And I would see my friends playing with really nice toys, and every time a new nice toy came out, they would have it. That's what I'm talking about by entitled. It's not that. Uh, the people are bad, but they've gotten so accustomed to being able to go out and anytime something new comes out that they really want, they, they've been able to go out, go to the store, they see it, and they can get it. They don't have to do without, they don't have to sacrifice, they don't have to save up to, necessarily to get it, they can just go get it. Oftentimes spending money on credit cards, uh, some people are smart enough to actually save the money up and pay cash for it but when I was a kid when my parents were kids and when my grandparents were kids that wasn't the case there were uh, frequently things that were even what you would call necessities that we couldn't get um, I grew up I'm not gonna lie I grew up poor uh, my family was poor we always had what we really needed for the most part. Um, I mean, there were some instances and in I, I remember where food was, you were always wondering what you were gonna eat. And there were a couple of times where our living situation was uh, a serious concern. But for the most part, and I credit my father with this, we had food, we had a place to live. We might not be able, as kids, we might not have the, the newest, coolest toys. Um, we might ha not have all the things that we want, but we had what we needed. Um, that's how I grew up. Now, I can tell you from first-hand experience that with my own son, I've worked myself to a point in my life where I'm not rich by any stretch of the means. I wouldn't even call myself middle class. But I have what I need and I'm, I'm doing good enough that if there's something I want, I can usually get it through hard work and saving up. A lot of people today, sorry if the wind is drowning me out, um, a lot of people today they don't know what it's like to not be able to get what they want as soon as they see it. They, they're accustomed to this instant gratification. Um, they see something in the store they want. They have the, either the cash on hand from their job that they can pay for it, or they have credit cards with really high credit limits. They can just slap that card down and buy it. Um, Amazon is a perfect example of this, that people have gotten so accustomed to immediate gratification, you can order something and bam, within a day or two it's there. It's almost impossible to wait for a week or two for it to come in the mail if you order it from a catalog, which is no longer done, but people don't want to wait more than a day or so. They want it now. Um, and that's just the way that's the way this uh, this generation is. They've, they've grown up with it. That's all they know. And that's what they're accustomed to. Now, that's not to say there are some people there's still a segment of the, of the population where they still have to scratch and, and scrabble to to get the bare necessities. Uh, that they don't have the luxury of throwing down money for whatever it is that they want. There's still a segment of population that live <sighs> paycheck to paycheck. 
paycheck to paycheck, uh, barely hanging on, kind of like the way I grew up and the way my parents and grandparents lived. So when I say this generation, I'm not talking about everybody. There's some that understand what, what sacrifice and struggle is, but the vast majority of people in America these days either don't know what it's like to struggle, to have to sacrifice, or go without the things that you want, and often the things that you need just to be able to get by. But there's also a portion of that population that while they grew up that way, their lifestyle, their quality of life has improved so much that maybe they've forgotten. Maybe they don't remember just how hard it was. Uh, and I'm telling you, this year and next, and it's gradually going to get worse, not just with the food crisis, but with, with all things in general, I'm telling you, we're, go, uh, we're, we're coming into a time where you're not going to be able to get what you want. Even if you, you may not have the money for it because it's so expensive. Or if you do have the money for it, it might not be available. Um, and it's going to be a struggle for people to, you may or may not be able to get what you want right away. And it's going to be a struggle for people to even get the bare necessities, food, hygiene items, clothes, um, everything is going up so drastically uh, in price so quickly that it's going to be a real challenge getting what you need let alone all the nice shiny things that you want and there's some of us that remember what those times are like some of us that still live like that, that still live in those type of times. Uh, there's a lot of people that grew up like that, but have become, they set themselves up fairly well so that they don't have to worry about things. And they've forgotten what it's like to worry about things. And then there's a segment of population that has no clue whatsoever. And it's, it's not necessarily their fault. I'm not laying blame on anybody. It's just the fact that some people don't understand, they don't realize, they have no clue what it's like and what's headed their way. There's going to be a time where everybody's going to have to struggle, not just for what you want, but for what you need. There's going to be a time where the last thing on your mind is going to be the new phone that's coming out, that new widescreen TV, ultra, ultra HD, 4K, whatever it is. Uh, people right now, they, they're, they're focused on things like that, buying the latte, buying the newest, nicest, coolest car, buying the coolest watch, having the nicest, coolest clothes. We're quickly heading into a time where all of that crap is not going to matter. What's going to matter is, do you have a roof over your head? Do you have food to eat? And can you pay your bills? We're quickly getting back to a time where those are the primary uh, concerns, not the cool stuff. So, we need to be using this time right now. We, things are getting a little bit tighter. A little bit more difficult, a more a little more expensive, but we're still living in relative comfort for the most part. I'm not saying everybody is, but for the most part, we are. There, there's people out there that are struggling hard day to day. But for right now, Americans in general live in relative comfort. We don't know what it's like to go hungry for days we don't know what it's like to uh, uh, to do without 
and to have to sacrifice like a lot of people in a lot of other places do. The United States has been relatively blessed for a long period of time and that time is coming to an end very quickly either by design or just the falling of the cards however you want to look at it that time is quickly coming to an end now we'll we'll still be better off than a lot of other places in the world we're not going to be uh, on the same level as certain third world countries but at the same time people in third world countries they're used to doing without they're used to improvising they're used to making do I would say the vast majority of Americans aren't and that that's the key is because people like me that remember what it was like that lived through it at one point in our lives we have those memories we have that experience to fall back on I've been homeless I've wondered where I was going to sleep I've wondered what I was going to eat because I had no food I had no money I've had to live on the handouts of others I don't like that but I've had to do it so I know what it's like and uh, that gives me an advantage I believe um, now granted looking back everything's rose colored and <sighs> you always look at things in the past and they don't seem as bad as they actually were at the time but that memory is there that experience is there and while I might not remember it being as bad as it actually was I do have some memory and some experience to fall back on and that could be an advantage to me in surviving what's coming because I can improvise I can make do I can substitute things I might not be happy I might not be comfortable but I'll have what I need again there's a big segment of the United States they don't have that experience they don't have that knowledge and because of that they can't see it actually happening which is dangerous because then they can't prepare for it and when it does happen they can't think outside the box they can't uh, improvise or adapt or overcome as the, as the saying goes but these are things that are coming and these are things that we need to be ready for and it's because of this that I've stressed that I've stressed food and water storage so much that I've stressed growing your own food so much because we have to be able to rely more on ourselves government is not always going to be there to, to take care of you I mean I think some of the d hurricanes that have come through the United States ought to have taught people a lesson in that the government is not necessarily going to be able to take care of you and it's not their responsibility to take care of you that's the that's the main thing it's your own responsibility to take care of yourself and your family so you need to be doing whatever it is you have to do take the precautions take the time to prepare to get ready build the skills build the knowledge build the network get active do what needs to be done put back the food that's your cushion that's your safety belt for when things go downhill you'll have something to fall back on while you do figure things out this is going to be a bumpy ride folks and we need to we need to be aware of that and do what we have to do to be ready that's all I've got for right now um, I appreciate you guys watching thank you to all the new subscribers uh, like share subscribe if you haven't thank you for the people that have been commenting um, just 
Take advantage of these good times while they last. If there's anything that you can take away from this video, I would say that. Take advantage of them. Don't waste them. We're living in relatively still good times. Things are getting worse, but times are relatively good for the most part. How long that lasts, we don't know. So take advantage of it. Enjoy your life, but get ready. With that, that's all I've got for right now. Thanks again, folks. Uh, I hope you're staying busy and doing what you got to do. Until next time, take care, and I'll catch you later.